Welcome to Mega Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and today let's talk It Comes at Night. Now, we're going to talk a little bit uh, spoiler free, and then we're going to get into some spoilers. But if you haven't seen this movie, if you haven't even seen a trailer, you don't know anything about it. If you're a fan of this channel, if you're a fan of the zombie apocalypse, you're a fan of post-apocalyptic, if you're a fan of The Last of Us, that type of atmosphere, I will highly recommend you go and watch this. And if you're a fan of The Walking Dead, go into this movie thinking, this is the best origin story for a villain I have ever seen. Now again, we're staying spoiler free. I'm not going to tell you what character. I'm not going to, because there is a cast of characters, let's say six or seven or eight different characters. It's a small cast. Each one did fantastic. No complaints on the small cast. And when you're done, at the end of this video, we're going to talk two or three minutes about some spoilers, and I will mention what I'm talking about in that. But go and see it. Ronnie definitely recommends this movie. I think it, it should get more more support than it has been getting. The trailer was a complete and absolute lie. Probably one of the most deceiving trailers. Maybe that was my mind playing tricks on me, but the trailer made it seem like, correct me if I'm wrong, you got some people surviving, there's a virus, we don't know if it's zombies or monsters, but there's something happening, or maybe just a virus that turns you sick. I, I, I could have sworn it, it alluded to it turning you into something that kills people, whether you're a zombie or you just go crazy. I could have sworn it alluded to that. But anyway, uh, this is definitely more atmospheric. It's definitely more uh, realistic. It's dark. And I think if you go into it for the atmosphere and you go into it expecting to just watch people survive some horrible circumstances, I think you're going to truly have a lot of fun. I think as far as when it comes to the acting, there's not one role that is weak. Everyone brings their A game. When it comes to the sound, fan friggin tastic. The music, it could have been bumped up a little bit. And they could have done a little bit more in a few different places. But I understand why they wanted to pull back a little bit. When it comes to the story though, the story is great I think if you don't have the expectations from the trailer. I can see the trailer just killing it for a lot of people as far as their enjoyment because the trailer really does deceive you and make you think that you're going to go into this and see a whole different type of movie. Go into this expecting to see just some people surviving some horrible circumstances in a post-apocalyptic world that has some really fantastic visuals, just some awesome stuff. Now, get out of here and go watch it and then come back. Leave your thoughts and opinions uh, when you do get back about what you thought about the movie. And for those of you who have seen it, we're going to go into just a couple, uh, couple different things that I noticed. Maybe when it comes out on Blu-ray, we'll dive in deep if you guys are interested about breaking down some of it because it's not not all surface level, like the title and everything. Uh, when it when it ended, I thought, wait a minute, it comes at night. Nothing comes at night but nightmares, I, I guess. Is that what they mean? So we'll have to break it down. Uh, so for those of you who haven't seen it, go see it. For those of you who have seen it, we are going to get into just a couple spoilers. So spoiler warning, let's dive in. At the very end, I was left wondering, is this the end? Is this how they're going to end it? Because my mind was going a number of different directions, right? When the dog ran off and then it came back, I was thinking, okay, who unlocked the door? That's going to be a part of the story. I was thinking, ooh, was this a creature that brought the dog back? Was this a zombie? Was this another gang or bandits? Or was this something that brought the dog back? Was the dog injured? Was the dog, you know, mutilated and then brought back by some sicko? Was this the dog that's just sick, like they said? What is it? You know, and I thought that was going to be another part of the story, uh, but they didn't go in those directions. They left it a little ambiguous about who unlocked the door. And I think if you narrow it down realistically, it's got to be the kid, right? Even though his dad did say that the kid's not even tall enough to open the door. So there's definitely some questions. There's definitely some areas where I thought they were going to go in different directions. And that spans throughout the entire movie, not just those areas where I gave you examples. But the ending, 10 seconds after it went black and I thought, wait a minute, was that that was it. Uh, I definitely could have, I was enjoying myself so much, I definitely could have watched another 20 minutes, and I think this is where uh, they could have probably made this a, a little bit better for those who, who were expecting something a little bit different by adding 20 more minutes of something. I'll get into that in a moment, but uh, at the very end when they were sitting there, and it took a few seconds for it to soak in, I was thinking, I love that. 
I love that because you see them so miserable and then you think back to where they found that other family and they were sitting there and they seemed so happy and it was so hopeful and so bright. And um, if you look at those two where they started and where they ended, I thought it was great. And I do want to go back and watch it again as soon as it comes out on Blu-ray. I want to dive into it and see what I can pick out of it. There were some moments that were a little bit frustrating, uh, like the nightmares with the kid. That was obvious. Uh, well, first off, I felt like it was a little unrealistic. It, it, only a tad for a 17-year-old. He kind of came off as someone who's maybe a little bit younger, like 14 or something. That was a little bit off. The nightmares, they were a little bit too predictable. They had the, I think the nightmares were the most, you know, tension. They were supposed to be tension. They were, they had the jump scare, which the very first one, I thought that was the only good one. Anything after that, it was too predictable that this was a nightmare. This was to mess with your head. And then I was thinking, well, is that what they mean by it? comes at night nightmares come at night yada 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 so I do got to go back and really pull things uh, apart from the movie but those were the moments I didn't really like because every time a nightmare started I knew well it's a nightmare this doesn't matter this doesn't count but then a part of my brain started telling me no shut up this is part of uh, the mental stress this is part of the paranoia this is part of the story and it's probably going to be an important element by the end of the story now one thing I, I really think they could have done uh, a lot better maybe helped out with uh, the trailer making it seem like there was going to be a little more tension and suspense and action I thought if they added something as simple as a, another attack on the house if you're not going to have any any creatures or zombies or anything like that or, or the infected if you're not going in that direction then have just a desperate band of people who maybe who are even just messed up and psychotic it doesn't matter just a general idea showing you where I think they could have ramped this up a bit uh, before you get the climax with the two families before that kicks off and the the kid starts the avalanche of sickness you get this attack on the house it's so suspenseful suspenseful and I'm saying they should have or they could have had this attack maybe a 20 minute piece of them surviving this and ramp up the suspense and the tension and ramp up the action in that moment and have the entire family survive and then bring us into the moment where it's them that kill each other and I think that would have been so impactful because they were going into the direction of them uh, growing this bond and when it did end in that moment if you tweak some things if you take Joel Edgerton's character did I mess that up uh, if you take his character if you tweak some things at the end as soon as he made that final shot right with the gun in case anyone's lingering around that they they shouldn't be in the spoiler section uh, as soon as he made that final shot I was thinking oh my god this is the best villain origin story I have ever seen on a movie or a show or anything and they were probably not even going for that they were just going for people who live who are living in some really messed up times and they have to do some things that they wouldn't normally do that they don't want to do and the paranoia and the stress and the uh, stresses of this world at getting supplies getting food the desperation of it brought them to a place where they did something and at the end it was for nothing because they lost the one thing they were protecting the one thing that was keeping them together and at the end you had that empty chair it was the mother the father that empty chair there was a lot that I pulled from it that I just loved I just loved it but there are flaws I there's so much I really dig and I do feel like they could have made it a lot better by adding a little chunk there are some flaws but at the end of the day for what this was and somehow in the theater when I started watching it my expectations went right out the window and I just said and I like Joel Edgerton's as an actor I think he has a lot of charisma and I think he brings a lot to the role and I just sat back and was like okay let me watch this family and their story of survival and just enjoy this and I ended up enjoying the hell out of it the slow burn atmosphere uh, vibe the darkness uh, the I will say speaking about darkness this kind of felt like they filmed it and then they put some kind of tint on it that I didn't like it felt like you were watching it through you know sunglasses it felt like you were watching it and they added something in post-production that 
put a, a layer over it that made everything darker. That I did not like at all. I do not like uh, when they darken it, you know what I mean? And if that's something they did, then that was a choice to make everything, as far as the tone and the look, uh, they made everything consistent, but it's just something that I don't like. I love having dark scenes, dark moments, a dark story, and then you have just that bright, gorgeous day. I think the way it contrasts each other is just gorgeous, and it it adds something. It adds a level of, of realism because the world doesn't know when something bad is happening. You know what I mean? Like if a zombie apocalypse or a virus or something breaks out right now, you know, the world's just not going to grow dark. That's just not real. So when they change things in post-production and they make the movies look dark visually, those I don't like because taking dark elements in a dark story and then having something that's bright, beautiful, and gorgeous in nature, like the, the a sunset or sunrise or just a bright, shining sun with a blue sky, I think there's something beautiful with that combination. And I think that's something I'll, 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 people with the um, people making post-apocalyptic movies should pay more attention to. If it's nuclear and everything's a wasteland, okay, you know what I mean? But uh, if it's not, if it's just a virus, then maybe play around with that. You know, It's not going to mess up the tone as much. I think it'll add a little bit more for us as fans to um, uh, appreciate. Now, I'm sure there's more I could discuss uh, that happened in the movie, uh, but I'm just not thinking of it. So, <laughs> thoughts and opinions. What did you think about It Comes at Night? I enjoyed it a lot, although my expectations were for something totally different. I was absolutely going into the theater expecting to watch people surviving in the house, and there's you know zombies or monsters or infected of some type. I don't know what about the trailer made me think that. Maybe it was just my head, but I cannot get enough of the post-apocalyptic movies, so this is another one that I, I will absolutely accept, enjoy, buy, and support. Uh, go and see 100%. I'm so sick and tired of people who are just not hardcore fans of the genre saying, oh, the, the you know, the genre saturated yet again, another post-apocalyptic movies. Well, then you're not the core fan base. You know, you're not the hardcore fan base, you asshole. Get out of here. It's not like every time we talk about superhero movies, we're like, oh, why are they still making these things? No, because there's superhero fans who want superhero movies. So sit back, shut up, and let us have our post-apocalyptic virus, zombie, you know, bullshit, whatever. <laughs> Let us have that because that is our favorite genre, or, or at least it's it's mine, you know. Uh, thoughts and opinions in the comment box. I'm done talking. It's your turn. Subscribe now.